The story begins, and we see Qin State, Luzhou, east of Qinyang City. Then we see a man talking about himself. My name is Jiang Zhu, and I am originally a good young man in the 21st century. I don't know why I transmigrated to this world where there are demons, devils and immortals, but I also awaken to the providential system. This system allows me to see the past and future for others, but it needs to consume points, and I have to find treasures from all over the world to sacrifice to it, and I can only see for others, and even help others change their fate but not mine. Also, I think there is something wrong with this system. And then a man says to Jiang Ju, Hey, fortune teller, will I get married? And Jiang Ju looks at that man and says to him, Ten copper coins. At the same time Jiang Ju is thinking, I'm just an ordinary guy. How can I obtain any treasures to feed this system? But the man says to Jiang Ju, Are you sure? So expensive. And Jiang Ju tells him, Hey, if I'm not sure, you just turned my stall upside down. Then the man gives the money to Jiang Ju and Jiang Ju says to him, Okay, write anything you want. And that man has made a drawing of a turtle, and Jiang Ju is not saying anything after seeing it. Then the system tells Jiang Ju, the host wants to see the fate for Zhao de Bao. It needs to consume one fate point. Zero years old, a baby boy born in the Nyoto village, his father. Zhao Ergen named the baby boy, Zhao de Bao. Sixteen years old, Zhao de Bao encouraged his buddies to peek at the widow's bath, and was hung from a tree by Lu's concubine, Zhao Ergu, and beaten with bamboo sticks. Thirty years old, because of his bad reputation, no girl wants to marry him. Fifty years old, Zhao de Bao died in a disaster year at the hands of bandits, and he never married. After the simulation is over, do you want to change the fate and reduce it? The reduction needs to consume 10 points of Zhao de Bao's merit. Zhao de Bao's current merit, 3. You can choose to spend your 100 points of merit to change his life. Current merit, 89539. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, don't be ridiculous. I met a passerby by chance. How could I consume my own merit to change his fate? And the system further says, you peeked at his fate. You can choose to hide the secret. Reward, merit minus 100. Three disasters and natural punishment. Or do you want to tell his fate, penalty for telling the truth, plus ten merit points and one of the following punishments, one Zhao de Bao's peeping experience, two Zhao de Bao's blacksmithing skills, three widow Lu's belly band. And listening to the system, Jiang Zhu feels a bit strange and at the same time he is thinking, what is this strange thing? I said the system is wrong. Ordinary fortune-telling is not to reveal the truth, only it forced me to tell the truth with people. Speaking will get me merit and special rewards, I do not say it will award me three days of punishment, death without burial. Then the man says, fortune plate, what's up? And Jiang Zhu tells him, have you ever heard a frog chirping? Ha! Gekwat widow, the marriage of wood. And as soon as the man hears this, he gets very angry and picks up the table lying in front of Jiang Zhu and throws it, and Jiang Zhu is saying to him, This world's people, why are they so cranky? Then the system tells Jiang Zhu, You have revealed the truth of the heavens, and have been punished for it. For merit plus ten, Zhao de Bao's blacksmithing skills. But Jiang Zhu is getting very angry, and he is saying to the system, What about the remaining two options? Playing dead again. Forcing me to tell the fortunes of three people every day. The people of this world cannot let me take the initiative to find others to count only to wait for others to come to me. In my truthful mouth, almost no one is looking for my fortune telling. I can only go to the West City to try my luck. There are many foreigners. There is always a thought. Next, the scene shifts, and we see the rabbit demon, who is running very fast. Her name is Red Sandalwood. And while going ahead she is saying, I never thought that the secret treasure of the demon kingdom would be so easily obtained by me. And I never thought that the heavenly demon Lord Tushan Lan was hiding such a secret. And as she looks down, she sees Jiang Ju, who is walking forward looking very disappointed. And the rabbit dame is thinking, just a subtle area of reasoning, not the usual half word. So familiar? I remember, in the clan... The old ancestor had personally invited him into the ancestral land, 
and he was carrying this pair of cloth streamers in the bamboo basket. I remembered he was a fortune teller. I didn't expect to meet him here. This is a great opportunity, not to be wasted. And Red Sandalwood comes directly in front of Jiang Ju and says to him, Please stay, mister, but Jiang Ju turns his head to the other side and tells her, You really got a lot of nerve to enter a human city in broad daylight. And as soon as Red Sandalwood hears this, she is shocked. Then she says to Jiang Ju, Can you tell my fortune, Mr. Xiao? At the same time Red Sandalwood is thinking, I'm the best at hiding my breath, and that's how I was able to steal the treasure of the heavenly demon lord. But now just face to face, he recognized the real body, and is really an expert, and Jiang Ju says to Red Sandalwood, It is very expensive. And Jiang Ju is thinking, this is clearly a demonic creature. To tell her fortune if I tell the truth, she will not only upset the stall, may I also lose my life. Motherfucker, this system has to let people come to me voluntarily to be qualified, and not give me the right to refuse, just want to play with me. And Red Sandalwood says to Jiang Ju, I know, please make a price. So Jiang Ju tells, 100,000 spirit stones. And Jiang Ju is thinking, it's not a small amount, and I hope she'll back off. And as soon as Red Sandalwood hears this, she becomes very shocked. And she is thinking, so expensive? Although I have reached the spiritual stage of demon cultivation, I also need a hundred years of savings to save such a sum of spiritual stones. Mortal's man does not even know what a spirit stone is. He dares to open his mouth. I must have found the right person. Even the old ancestors have to be treated with courtesy of the divinatory master. One hundred thousand spirit stones is not expensive. Then Jiang Ju starts leaving this place, but Red Sandalwood stops Jiang Ju and tells him, Mr. Xiao, I don't know if this top-grade magic weapon, the Red Flame Pearl, might be worth it. And Jiang Ju is thinking while looking at that thing, Red Flame Pearls? How many points can I get for this? The 100,000 spirit stones I want can be exchanged for 20,000 heavenly fate points. And the system says the top grade magic weapon, Red Flame Pearl, can be exchanged for 22,000 heavenly fate points. And Jiang Ju says to Red Sandalwood, Yes, you can write a word. And Red Sandalwood writes something on that paper and gives it to Jiang Ju. And she is saying, Thank you, sir. I'd like to calculate my future. And the system says, For calculating the fate of Red Sandalwood? This deduction needs to consume 10,000 destiny points. And Jiang Ju is thinking, yes. It's different for demons than for ordinary people, and the system is telling, zero years old. A rabbit was born in Kyukin Ridge, the land of 10,000 demons. At the age of 300, the rabbit absorbed the essence of the sun and the moon, successfully transformed into a form and opened its wisdom, and named itself Red Sandalwood. And Jiang Ju is thinking, she actually stole the treasures of the Lord of Heavenly Demons, this. Original Lord of Heavenly Demons, is there such a secret? Then the system says, you have peeked at the fate. Do you want to reveal the secret penalty? Plus 1000 merit, and one of the following penalties. 1. The Red Sandalwood Cultivation Perception. 2. The Upper Grade Yellow Grade Technique. Charmed Heart Technique. 3. Dash, miscellaneous Books. Raiders men's hundred kinds of insights. You peeked at the fate. Do you want to hide the secret? Reward, merit minus ten thousand, three days penalty. And Jiang Ju is thinking, oh no, this means that I also know the secret of that day's devil master, that big devil is omnipotent, I'm afraid I will be implicated. And Red Sandalwood says, Mr. Xiao, what is my future? And Jiang Ju tells him, future? Huh? People who are about to die. What kind of future are they talking about? And as soon as Red Sandalwood hears this, at that very moment someone cuts Red Sandalwood's neck. Due to which Jiang Ju also gets very shocked, and blood splatters fall on Jiang Ju. Then when people see this, they get very scared. And those people are looking upwards, and someone attacks these people, due to which all of them are killed. And at that place enters the demon lord. And this happens, 10,000 Demon Kingdom Supreme Demon Lord Tu Shanon. Then the servant says to Tu Shanon, Your Majesty, we have found it. And Tu Shanon takes that thing. Next we see Jiang Ju, who is thinking, I'm really hurt by that rabbit spirit. 
he touched something of the heavenly demon lord and came to me for fortune-telling. What's even worse is that. Now in front of me is heavenly demon lord Tu Shan Lan. And Tu Shan Lan says to Jiang Ju, since she is looking for Mr. Xiao for fortune-telling, why don't you tell me fortune-telling, how? But Jiang Ju says, what fortune-telling? I don't understand, I'm just a passerby. And tears start falling from Jiang Ju's eyes, and he starts running away. At the same time he is thinking, it seems that she came early. I should not have said that the people who will die. Cannot say that the system will not let me go on now well. The Lord of the Heavenly Demons is looking for me to tell her fortune. And as soon as Jiang Ju starts running away from this place, Red Sandalwood servants come in front to stop Jiang Ju, then say to him, Your Holiness didn't say to let you go. And seeing those people Jiang Ju gets scared, and he says, Be a human being and stay on the line, so we can meet again in the future. And Tu Shanlan says, But I am a demon. And Jiang Ju says, Ah, yes, yes. In fact, my hexagram gold is very expensive, and Tu Shanlan says it doesn't matter, I have plenty of money. And Jiang Ju says, In fact, there are many taboos in spying on the secrets of others. And Tu Shanlan is getting angry, and she says, Tell my fortune or die. And Jiang Ju moving the brush forward says, Please write a word. And Tu Shanlan takes the brush. And Jiang Ju is thinking, Alas, forget it, forget it. Whether it is the Lord of Heavenly Demons or the system, I can't refuse anyone, is dead or alive, let the heavens decide. And the system tells Jiang Ju, Is this a fate calculation for Tu Shan Lan? This time you need to consume 100 million destiny points. And as soon as Jiang Ju hears this, he gets a huge shock. And he is thinking, 100 million? I've been here for five years and it's the first time I've had to consume so many fate points for someone else's fortune. But I have saved a few heavenly fate points, but not enough for a fraction of that. By the way, this system of mine is to calculate the fate of heaven, the higher the subject's cultivation, the stronger the talent, the higher the future achievement, the more difficult the deduction will be, and the more heavenly fate points will be consumed. She is the demon lord, and her cultivation base and talent are among the best, that's why she wasted her points. And Tu Shanlan says, can't figure it out. And Tu Shanlan is thinking, I thought he was a man of ability who could tell the life and death of her in one word. But now he sees the word kill, he's scared, so useless. And Tu Shanlan says to her servant, kill him. And just as the servant is about to kill Jiang Ju, Jiang Ju asks Tu Shanlan to stop, and tells her, who says I can't calculate? I am afraid that I can calculate but the Lord of Heavenly Demons cannot hear. And Tu Shanlan stops her servant. Then she says, What do you want? And Jiang Ju says, If the Heavenly Demon Lord is willing to use the entire demon kingdom as my gold, perhaps I can. And Tu Shanlan says, Bluffing. Sword slave, kill him. And Jiang Ju stops him and says, Wait, wait. Although the Lord of Heavenly Demons can't pay the money, I can calculate a corner of the future for you. The Lord of Heavenly Demons does not want to see what great achievements you made after a thousand years. Don't you want to see if you, are you still here after a thousand years? And Tu Shanlan stops her servant. And she says, you can figure out what I'll be doing in a thousand years? And Jiang Ju is saying, you can give it a shot. And Jiang Ju is thinking, come on, let's see what she'll become in a thousand years. Tu Shanlan insisted on my fortune telling because she wanted to know the secrets of herself. Anyway, when I was doing the fortune-telling for Red Sandalwood, I already had this secret. It's just, what do I say? If it's something bad, really say it. I guess she must stab me through thee. And the system tells Jiang Ju, you have chosen to perform the fate for. Tu Shan Lan. You have chosen to perform the fate after 1,000 years. This time you need to spend 1 million destiny points and Jiang Ju says, pay in advance one lower grade magic weapon, or five million spirit stones. Tu Shaman then gives one million spirit stones to Jiang Ju. And the system tells Jiang Ju, a thousand years later, Tu Shan Lan is breastfeeding a baby in Qixia Valley. And as soon as Jiang Ju hears this, he is shocked. At the same time he is thinking, huh? Breast, breastfeeding? The supreme being of the ten thousand demon kingdom, 
the nightmarish demon lord of the human race. A thousand years later, nursing a baby with a happy face? That murderous demoness? Who is it so capable? And the system further tells Jiang Zhu, one thousand and one years later, Tu Shan Lan was having a headache with her eldest son's education. The little bastard didn't want to learn her way of killing, but had to learn his useless way of trigrams, which made her very angry. It's one thousand and two years later, Tu Shaman began to formally teach the practice of the second and third daughters, and was extremely satisfied with their talents. One thousand and three years later, Tu Shan Lan's four sons caught him enough when the two streamers that wrote, only talk about the mysterious and subtle area of reasoning, not to say ordinary half a sentence false. She was very angry, obviously prepared the axe, hook, fork, sword, halberd and other kinds of divine weapons and spiritual treasures to beat him. One thousand and four years later, the fifth child in the belly of Tu Shanlan still has no sign of birth this year, which makes her vaguely begin to worry. One thousand and five years later, and Jiang Ju is thinking, there seems to be something wrong. And the system tells Jiang Ju, one thousand and ten years later, Tu Shanlan's husband, Jiang Ju Yin, finally returned from the Yellow Springs to the Red Cloud Valley, which made her very happy. But while making out, her keen sense of smell picked up the scent of another woman on his body, and as soon as Jiang Zhu listens to the system, he gets extremely shocked, and he is thinking, Tu Shanlin's husband, Tu Shanlin's husband, me? Fuck. I thought who has such an ability to turn this wild demon lord into a mother, and willingly take care of the baby? it turned out to be me, it's all right. Then the system further says, stimulation ends, do you want to change her fate? For calculating two Shan Lan's fate again needs one million merit points, current merit points, 11.25 million. You can also choose to spend one million merits to change your fate, your current merit points are 89539. And Jiang Ju gets surprised after hearing this, and he is thinking, I also thought if the future wasn't good I can pay some price to change the future in order to not be killed by this demon. More than 10 million negative points? What exactly has this demoness done to harm heaven and earth? How is it that she has not been killed by heavenly punishment? I have accumulated all these years of merit. Even a fraction of her life is not enough. Then Tu Shaman says, Mr. Xiao, did you figure it out? And Jiang Ju is thinking, it's over. If I said the truth, it is 100% sure that I'll be killed by her subordinate right now. And the system tells Jiang Ju, you have piqued the fate of heaven. You can choose to conceal the fate of heaven, the reward, merit 1 million. Nine heavy thunder punishments to death you have piqued the fate. You can choose to reveal the truth, the penalty, merit plus 100,000, and one of the following punishment. And Jiang Ju is thinking, usually calculating the fate, chooses to hide the secret although the punishment is three disasters and natural punishment. But the system did not say that it is inevitable death. But this time, the system clearly said, You can't get it through, you're fucked. And the system says, One, two, Shanlin's parenting experience, two, miscellaneous book, ten thousand ways to train your husband, three, half jade pendants, and Jiang Zhu is thinking, and what the fuck with these three rewards? No way. Choose the third one and take a gamble. This mortal half-jade pendant without any fluctuation in spiritual power, for some reason has a breath and also hides a secret of Tu Shan Lan. With this pendant you can ask one request she'll not be able to reject it. With this jade pendant, I'm saved. And Tu Shan Lan says to Jiang Ju, Why is Mr. Xiao silent? Are you lying to me? Then Jiang Ju says, Congratulations to you. And Tu Shanan says, what's the matter? So Jiang Ju says, a thousand year later, you'll become a mother four children's and there's still one in your belly. The eldest son is wise and intelligent, learning the numbers of the eight trigrams, the five elements of yin and yang, the ancient and modern matters are in the palm of his hand. The second and third daughters, the twin daughters, are born with amazing talent. They know the power of the gods and the way of killing and destroying. They have the talent to be the best in the world. The fourth son is young not cultivated, but born with the appearance of the innate saint, innate holy body without dust, born with heavy pupils, five immortals to protect the body, five ghosts to open the way, all immortals are transmitted to the incense. 
the fifth son is still in the womb, but there is the innate purple chi contained in the fetus. The imperial dragon vein often looks back. This is the face of the emperor. And as soon as Tu Shana listens to Jiang Ju's words, she starts getting very angry, and she starts releasing her powers. Then she says to Jiang Ju, Do you know the price of talking nonsense? And Jiang Ju says to Tu Shanan, If I talk nonsense, God will hate me. And as soon as Jiang Ju says this, there is thundering in the sky. Then Tu Shanan says to Jiang Ju, In that case, you may tell me what kind of man I am willing to bear and raise children for him. And Jiang Ju laughingly tells Tu Shanan, Oh no, it's me. And hearing this, Tu Shanan gets angry, and her servant also gets more angry, and he says, Bold, one of the. Then Tu Shanan says to Jiang Ju, Mr. Xiao, I'm afraid your calculation is wrong. But then Jiang Ju shows Tu Shanan to Jade. Then he says, Whether the calculation is true or false, it's not up to you to decide, and also take a look at this item. And Tu Shanan gets surprised after seeing Jade and she says, Why did you have this item? And Jiang Ju says to Tu Shanan, I heard that the holder of the Jade can make the Lord of Heavenly Demons promise one thing unconditionally. Is this true? Even if you want the Lord of Heavenly Demons to marry me, you can do it. And Tu Shanan says, True, and Jiang Ju is thinking. Even get married? Then Tu Shanan starts touching Jiang Ju's cheeks and says to him, When I look at you closely, you're really handsome. However, your fortune is inaccurate. And Jiang Ju says to Tu Shanan, Why did you say that? And Tu Shanan says to Jiang Ju, Because I will take you back with me to the kingdom of ten thousand demons to get married. But I only promise to marry you. On the wedding night I'll kill you. But your date of death is within this year, so you say your hexagram is definitely not accurate. And Jiang Ju tells me, I just took the jade pendant and asked, I did not intend to make this wish. Please give me back the jade pendant. I will think again. And at the same time Jiang Ju is thinking, Gone. This woman doesn't talk about martial arts. Then Red Sandalwood says to her servant, Sword slave, servant slave, bring him back to the kingdom of ten thousand demons. But then Jiang Ju talisman takes out. Then he says, You demon, whoever marries you is unlucky. If I gain merits and virtues in the future, I will definitely change my fate to this calamity. Goodbye. And that talisman using this, Jiang Ju disappears from this place. And when Tu Shaman sees this, she is very surprised. And then she says, His talisman, is that the old dragon's method? This fortune teller was able to get the old dragon of Sun Moon Lake to draw a light preserving talisman for him. Who is this divine being? And the servant says to Tu Shanan, Lord, do you want me to capture the person back? And Tu Shanan says, Save his life and bring him back to the ten thousand demon kingdom. At the same time, Tu Shanan is thinking, speaking of which, the red red sandalwood who stole my jade soul orb, is that old dragon's command, right? What are their intentions? And the servant says, The devil lord is going back to the lord of ten thousand demons? But Tu Shanan says, Let's go. No, go to Sun Moon Lake. After this the scene shifts and we see Wei State, Tianan Mountains, Yuhua River. And at this place Jiang Ju falls on the waterfall from above. Then he comes out of the waterfall, and is saying, Whoops! How unlucky! My talisman. After staying in the Sun and Moon Lake for half a month, it was hard to get from the old dragon. This is the only one I didn't expect to use today. Tu Shanlan. You just wait for me to become invincible. I will definitely not let you go. However, according to the results of the system's divination, Tu Shanlan will marry me in a thousand years. She also gave me five children, which is not a bad way to get revenge. No, that is the Lord who kills without blinking an eye. Forget it, it's really not worth it. I'd better try to accumulate some merit and change this fate. But, where am I? Look inside. Maybe there's a treasure there. Half a month later, Jiang Ju is moving very fast sitting on the tiger, and he is saying, Finally, it is almost a high open tenant mountain ridge DP. I didn't expect that the old dragons, 10,000 mile traveling talisman, would bring me to a place outside of Wei State where there was no one around. This Wei State is so close to the kingdom of 10,000 demons, I do not dare to go back, 
Do not let the demoness catch me. And the tiger is asking Jiang Ju, Where are you going next, sir? So Jiang Ju says, I better go to Qin State instead. Ah, uh, I don't have a boat to bypass the Yuhua River. But Tiger says, Don't worry, sir, I have a way to help you bypass the river. And Jiang Ju says, Really, thank you, brother Tiger. At the same time, Jiang Ju is thinking, This half a month is really not bad. Who would have thought that there is a forest here? There's a few spirits who have developed spiritual wisdom and Taoism. Not only did I successfully complete the three fortune telling task every day, but I also got such a big treasure. Then the tiger says to Jiang Ju, Sir, thanks a lot for calculating our destiny for us in this half a month. I am grateful to you for letting us know that a righteous God will come out of this place in the future. Everyone wants to give you a ride, why don't you agree? So Jiang Ju says, There's no need for doing such efforts. When the upright God appears in the future, as long as you do more good deeds, you will surely become an incense god who protects one side and enjoys one side's incense. And Jiang Ju is thinking, this group of beasts is not stupid, if I did not calculate the Tianan mountain ridge will come out a god, these mountain beasts can be contracted, and eventually enjoy a party of incense, they will not give me so much face. And the tiger is saying, I don't even know who the master is. This is the secret, and the secret must not be revealed. This is the secret, and the secret must not be revealed. And Jiang Ju is thinking, This positive God I have not counted. Maybe it's not born yet. I can come back to see it in the future when I have avoided the wind of Tu Shanlan. After some time, Jiang Ju is speaking to the tiger, That's it, you go back. But then water starts flowing in the air, seeing which Jiang Ju gets surprised, and he says, The river is dangerous, even with a boat. I'm afraid it cannot cross, brother tiger, you really have a way to let me bypass the river? And the tiger starts roaring. Then we see that because of that the water starts forming like a tornado, and Jian Ju also starts facing problems due to this. And we see that something starts coming up in front, seeing which Jian Ju becomes even more surprised. And a very big turtle comes to that place and that turtle says, Who dares to disturb the old man Qingxiu? And Jiang Ju is thinking, looking at that big turtle, he speaks human language, and already refined the crossbone in its throat, it seems to be a monster with profound knowledge. Then the turtle further says, I heard a fortune teller come to the mountain these days, and he also enlightened many spirits and monsters in the south mountain, but sir, I don't know what to call Mr. So Jiang Ju says, my surname is Jiang. And the tortoise asks, Mr. Jiang, what brings you here? And Jiang Ju is saying, it turns out that you want to cross the river. It's just a trivial matter. An old man is willing to give you a ride across the river. It's rare for an expert to come to me with this, and I would definitely want to make a good relationship with him. In that case, I won't be polite. Brother Tiger, let's meet again later. After some time, we see that Jiang Ju is moving forward sitting on that big turtle. And that tortoise is asking Jiang Ju, Where do you want to go, Mr. Jiang? So Jiang Ju says, Qin State. And Jiang Ju is thinking, I don't dare to go to Wei State for now. Then the tortoise says, Mr. Jiang is going to Qin. Is there something urgent? So Jiang Ju says, nothing urgent, I just want to travel all over the world. But the tortoise says, well, I'm advising you to not go Qin State these days. So Jiang Ju asks, why? Then the tortoise says, since Mr. Jiang calculates fortune. Why don't you see the current situation of Qin State? But Jiang Ju says, is it better to wait and keep flowing with time? And Jiang Ju is thinking, how can I understand these facial features? Look at Qi, six rin and six lions. My fortune telling are all calculated by the system. Fate of destiny. Okay? And the turtle says, what you said is right. And Jiang Ju is thinking, it is true that this way of divination is a way of harming oneself, and there are many taboos for peeking on the secrets of heaven. And the tortoise tells Jiang Ju, the Qin state was fine a few years ago, although the ruler of Qin state isn't an eloquent and strategic master, but also a middle-of-the-road master, with the establishment of diplomatic relations with the dragon king of Zhanghai. Everything was smooth, however seven years ago. The ruler of the Qin state took a fancy on a witch and in order to bring her into the palace, for her he abolished the queen he became addicted to wine, 
ignored taxes and many other things. Inside the palace he built the forest of meat and the pond of wine, which is comparable to a fairy land. Well, Qin State is not what it used to be. Hidden dangers are everywhere. If it's not urgent, I'd better suggest to not go. Then Jiang Zhu says to the turtle, Thanks for your reminder. I'll keep that in mind. At the same time Jiang Zhu is thinking, This giant tortoise is really enthusiastic. He also drove me across the river and kindly persuaded me. However, the Yuhua River still has to wave. After all, it is the state of Wei that goes back. This country of Wei is bordered by the kingdom of ten thousand demons. It is more likely her people looking for me in the Wei state. There's not a chance to go back. Then this turtle asked me a lot of irrelevant questions. I feel that they want to ask something but are embarrassed to ask. Half an hour later, we had already reached the river. On the way ahead, Jiang Zhu sees some monsters, seeing whom Jiang Zhu gets surprised, and says, These monsters are not ordinary. Why did you gather them here? And the tortoise says to Jiang Zhu, Sir, don't be afraid. These monsters are disciples and grandchildren of mine. I just heard that Sir forecasts the future of wild spirits in the Tianan Mountain, so I also want to ask for a chance. If the master doesn't like it then I'll let them disperse. And Jiang Zhu becomes happy after listening to the turtle. Then he says, it's okay, we met each other by fate, but the fate I calculated may not be as expected. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, after counting, I didn't complete my daily see three people's fate, it looks like I've to rely on them. Then the tortoise says, since sir has no problem, then I'll not be polite, please calculate my fate. And Jiang Zhu was thinking, I thought why would he want to help me to cross the river without any request, he finally said his request. And the turtle is saying, don't blame me sir, I know that this is a sudden request but there's one problem that has troubled me for most of my life and it's rare to have such an outstanding master as you. That's why I don't want to let this opportunity go, but worry master. I traveled this river for more than 1,200 years, and there are some treasures I happen to have, which can be regarded as a token of fees for calculating the fate. And Jiang Zhu says, I don't know what problem you're facing. So the tortoise says, since my enlightenment, I practiced 1,200 years. I always did good deeds and virtue, and never did any kind of evil things. On both sides of Yuhua River have many of mine ancestral hall, all of which are taken care by the villagers spontaneously built, which can be regarded as incense. But 1,200 years of accomplishment I didn't made any breakthrough in my cultivation base, and my vitality and blood begun to lose. But there's not a sign of my breakthrough. What I'm asking is, is there a chance for me to transform into a dragon? Jian Zhu is thinking after listening to the turtle, something is wrong. If this turtle is going to transform into a dragon, he probably has some dragon-like features on it. Apart from his big size there aren't any features of the dragon, obviously not found at all the side of the dragon. There is a bad feeling. Then Jiang Zhu says to the turtle, I'll tell you in advance that my divination is not cheap. At the same time Jiang Zhu is thinking, based on my experience of calculating destiny for so many years, I'm afraid that his destiny calculation won't be very good in case it is not satisfied with the result. I won't be able to beat twelve thousand year old monster, and then I'm still riding on his back. And the tortoise says to Jiang Zhu, just say it, sir. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, it's really strange, why every person who asked me about divination is so rich. Then Jiang Zhu takes out something. And the system tells Jiang Zhu, is this destiny calculation of the black back general of the Yuhua River. This calculation needs to consume 30,000 fate points. And after listening to the system, Jiang Zhu is thinking, 30,000 fate points. 30,000 spirit stones can actually be exchanged for 60,000 fate points. However, Foretelling fate, it needs to be doubled. Then Jiang Zhu says to the turtle, Disclaimer in advance, the no. If days are determined by the sky, if the calculation is not good, spirit stone is not refundable, still want me to count. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, This divination is very expensive. Although I collected some treasures all over the years, I really don't have that many spirit stones. Then the tortoise takes something out of its mouth and gives it to Jiang Zhu. Then he says to Jiang Zhu, Is this thousand years old sapphire wash seed holy fruit enough for you? 
and the system tells Jiang Ju, the wonderful item. Sapphire washed. Seed. Can be exchanged for 80,000 fate points, and Jiang Ju becomes happy after holding that thing. And Jiang Ju is thinking enough. Now, there is no excuse for rejection. Then the tortoise says then. Then please do my divination. And the system starts telling about the tortoise, at the of zero. A turtle was born in Tianan Mountain's Yuhua River at the age 60 years. He accidentally ate a sapphire lotus, and accidentally opened his wisdom, and named himself Black Black General. At the age of 200 years old, in Yuhua River, he devoured the blood of living beings and made rapid progress in cultivation base, at the age of 500 years old. He will be guided by the senior to wash away evil technique. After that he began plunder mortals of Wei and Qin State a group of human races built a prostitution net. At the age of 800 years old, the little dragon of Tai Ching River passed by the river of Yuhua found out Black Black General's evil deeds and shot him in anger. Fortunately he escaped however he injured his foundation and his cultivation became difficult to progress. At the age of 1201 years old, he once again tried to transform into a dragon but failed. After that he collided with the concubine of Qin State and began to plunder the refugees of human race and refine the blood pill. At the age of 1,204 years old, he will meet a human fortune master, hoping for some advice. But the fortune teller's word made him angry and wanted to put the fortune teller in the bottom of Yuhua River and suppressed him for a thousand years. Later he was rescued by an expert. The incense in the shrine will punish this turtle and die. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, no wonder, it's no wonder that after 1,200 years of cultivation, there is still no dragon transformation. It doesn't dare at all. It has been using the incense of the obscene shrine to cover up the secrets of the sky and avoid the catastrophe. How can it survive the catastrophe of transforming into a dragon? And the system further says, you peak the destiny. Do you want to hide the secret? You will be rewarded by the minus 30,000. 9 Karma Heavenly Punishment, or you want to tell the truth, penalty, merit plus 3,000, and one of the asterisk following penalties, 1 you will get his incense of evil deed technique, 2 blood pill refining technique, 3 his water controlling technique. And hearing this Jiang Ju is thinking, incense and fire becomes the way of God, is originally the righteous way, but Wubei will be practicing in the temple of obscenity, and its perception may be very strange. The method of blood pill sacrifice and refining sounds like an evil method. TSK, the only option I can choose is supernatural power the art of water control. And the tortoise asks Jiang Ju, Sir, am I able to transform into a dragon? So Jiang Ju says to the turtle, You may have underestimated my ability to tell fortunes with a body full of murder. You're really brave. And the turtle says, Sir, I only asked about my transform. I didn't tell you to see my other things, however you received the money. And the tortoise is thinking, he he he, how did he find out my real identity? All these years, in order to avoid the little dragon of Ta Chang River, I have kept a low profile, I have never seen this person, so how did he find out? Could it be that this person reached the peak of divination, so calculated it? And Jiang Ju says to that turtle, opportunity to transform into a dragon? Since you are asking for an opportunity to transform into a dragon, then I will give you this opportunity. Dragon Transformation Tribulation Do you dare? And hearing this the tortoise says to Jiang Ju, What do you mean by these words, sir? So Jiang Ju says, I'm going to sacrifice my own merit in order to transform you into a dragon. And the turtle says, I kindly carried you to cross the river, this is how you repaid my kindness? Are you all human cultivators such heinous and treacherous people? Fei Jiang Ju starts using his power, and he is saying, Disciple Jiang Ju, please pay homage to Xientian Lei Fa Tianzuin. Today I heard that the old tortoise of the Yuhua River, Blackback General, has been cultivating for more than 1,200 years, accumulating virtue and doing good, hard work. Xientian Lei Fa Tianzuin the legendary ortho and ofti in charge of thunder and punishment. Good boy, I have good intentions for you but you really dare to do that. And the turtle is surprised to see the lightning and is thinking, he really knows how to summon lightning. Who the fuck is he? 
Then suddenly the tortoise attacks Jiang Ju, but Jiang Ju starts using his power, and he says, The gods are above, and the merits and virtues belong to me. You little people, how dare you harm me? And then the tortoise stops, and he's thinking, I can't eat him. Huolong Jia was invited by him, if you eat him at this time, I will surely. And Jiang Ju is about to use his power on the tortoise, and is saying, Good people have their own rewards. Those who are evil will have their own punishment. Take this. Ha ha ha, General Black, didn't you ask me for a divination? Here today, you will be buried under the calamity of the dragon. The way of heaven is clear, and the retribution is not good. And Jiang Ju jumps over the turtle, and lightning starts falling on the turtle, due to which a very dangerous movement starts happening at that place, seeing which Jiang Ju also gets scared. But we see that the thunder lightning is stopped by the turtle shield. And now the tortoise has started getting very angry, and he is thinking, These incense are my accumulation for hundreds of years. I never thought I would consume so much now, but if I can just survive the dragon transformation tribulation, then everything will be worth it. The kid is surnamed Jiang. I'll take this opportunity. Then the tortoise looks towards the sky and says, The only way to survive this tribulation is to directly face it head on. Not good. And Jiang Ju is speaking to the turtle. The way of evil is also the way of the incense of obscene shrines, which is forbidden by our generation. Disperse. And Jiang Ju attacks the tortoise. At the same time he is thinking, Phew. This golden light is originally made from my virtue and merit to get rid of evil concubines. And due to Jiang Ju's attack the turtle shield breaks. But the turtle makes a strange attack, due to which nothing happens to it. Then Jiang Ju says to the turtle, I, my millennium incense, without the protection of the millennium incense shrine from obscene shireen, let's how can you deal with this tribulation? And the tortoise is thinking, this tribulation becomes a punishment from heaven, I must the... And then the tortoise attacks Jiang Ju and says to him, Jiang Ju, even if I'm going to die, I will definitely not let you be like this. And Jiang Ju is surprised to see the turtle attack. But then he jumps into the water, and the turtle is laughing and saying, Ha ha ha, these blood arrows already locked your chi, you can't escape anywhere now. With the surname Jiang, with you on my back, the old man will be happy when he dies and a huge explosion occurs at that place. Few days later, on the border of Qin State, Yuhua River. Then we see a boy, who is a prince and he is thinking, a few days ago, the Yuhua River suddenly flooded, and it damaged more than half a fertile land. The most fertile lands along the Yuhua River this year, the flood happened just when the seeds were planted, and the fields were destroyed and the peoples are in a very difficult situation. After the flood, the ensuing suffering of refugees is inevitable. But right now this isn't important. The important thing is how much food is still in the treasury. If the food inside the treasury is not enough then there's really gonna be a famine. At that time, the Qin state will become a hell on earth, and it is very likely that people are easy to eat. Would happen. Come to think of it, ever since that demon girl entered the palace, the Qin state has been in chaos. Is it really true that when a country is about to perish, there must be evildoers. And then a man said to the prince, We picked up a man from the boat. He seems to be alive, but it looks a bit strange. We obviously picked him from the river, but his clothes didn't wet at all. Then they take Jiang Ju to a room. After some time, Jiang Ju regains consciousness and gets up. At the same time he is thinking nays. Where am I? Am I on a boat? Did someone pick me up from the river? And then Jiang Ju feels something, and takes out his treasure from him. And when he sees that his treasure is broken, he becomes very sad, and he is thinking, sigh. My backup treasure broke like this. Ever since I was traveled to this world, my cultivation speed has been very fast. Even those disciples from the immortal sect can't compare to my cultivation speed, but these days I don't know how but I always meet some highly skilled opponents. In addition to this broken system, the boss who wants to cut me down is definitely much more than the other big bosses who have good intentions for me. So, I always chose life-saving treasure as a reward. Even my power is to escape. It's easy for me. Phew, I barely escaped. 
that old tortoise is really regarded as a great boss with thousands of years of cultivation. The blow he gave before he died smashed my life-saving treasure. I still have all the tales, no loss. But why do I always have a bad feeling? I'm not in some kind of crisis that hasn't been solved yet, am I? It's not because the old turtle's death blow has left me with some internal injuries, right? I didn't find any injury on my body? Then why? There is always a premonition of impending disaster? By the way, what day is today? And then the system tells Jiang Ju, it detected that the host didn't do any divination for three days, and the minor tribulation is about to come. And Jiang Ju gets shocked after listening to the system and he is thinking, I was in a coma for three days. Fortunately, it was just a minor tribulation. No, I can't survive this tribulation. I'm an 8th grade formation building realm small cultivator. Even if I have some means I don't have the guts to face this tribulation. Calm down, calm down. I know this day will come sooner or later. That's why I already found out the way to avoid tribulation. And the way has merits. Even if it is tribulation, the merits will lower down the tribulation a lot. And the other option is to cultivate an incense method, just like that old turtle relying on incense to avoid the tribulation. It's just that this incense method is an evil method, and there's many disadvantages. And if it is the orthodox way of incense, it needs to go through. Sealing the God position. Once the God position is achieved, there will be an extra layer of shackles, and it is not that simple. Over the years, I have accumulated lots of merits from fortune telling. This tribulation is way too hard to pass in the water. Moreover, I also consumed a lot of merits in order to invite the Taoist righteous god, Xietian Lei Fa Tianzuin, for that old turtle. Then the system starts increasing Jiang Ju's merit points, and seeing this Jiang Ju gets surprised, and he is thinking. Why is it still increasing? And the system tells Jiang Ju, the host gets 5,000 merit points for punishing black black generals. The merit has reached 100, 000, descended from the heaven, supernatural powers are self-performed, congratulations to the host for opening the heavenly eyes, and comprehending supernatural powers, insight chi technique, and when Jiang Ju is looking at the system panel, Prince arrives at that place, due to which Jiang Ju and Prince clash with each other, and Jiang Ju is thinking while looking at the Prince, he looks rich from the first look. Flat? Why does this guy look so pussy? I thought it's a woman in the disguise of a man. It looked like I misunderstood. And Jiang Ju says to the prince, Thank you son for saving me. I still have something to do. So let's just leave it alone. And Jiang Ju is thinking, The doom is imminent. So I don't care about many labels and greetings. And Jiang Ju starts leaving this place. And seeing him going, The prince's elder says, Young master, this man is really rude. You were kind enough to save him, but he was so to you. And looking at Prince Jiang Ju, he is thinking, This person is quite miraculous and must not be taken lightly. Then the prince says to the elder, Let's follow him and see. And as soon as Jiang Ju looks towards the sky, there is still lightning in the sky. And Jiang Ju is thinking after seeing this thing, The minor tribulation is not a thunder tribulation, but three tribulation like frugality hunger, sickness, disease, sword, sword soldier. The three days of minor tribulation is not as powerful as killing people in an instant, but it is like maggots on the tarsus, making life impossible and death impossible. And when the prince sees the thundering happening in the sky, he gets very shocked, and he is thinking, WTF is this, just a moment ago the sky was clear but why raining all of a sudden? The recent flood hasn't subsided yet, another rain, the newly built dam may not be able to handle it, this year's harvest. Then Jiang Ju jumps from the ship, and seeing this thing the prince becomes even more surprised, and is thinking, this man just got out of the water, why going again? And the elder says to the prince, young master, look, he's walking on water. And seeing this, the prince also becomes very surprised, and when the prince looks ahead, he sees a bright light, due to which he is not able to see properly. We then see Jiang Ju, who uses a heavenly eye, which causes a third eye to open above his forehead. And he is thinking, this is, Chi Luck. If I can find the treasure land of, Hidden Dragon, Feng Shui, then I can use the Hidden Dragon Feng Shui to cover the sky and avoid this small three-day calamity. 
This world is really unpredictable. The land of hidden dragons is way too hard to find. It's a pity that this place is far away from the Sun Moon Lake. I'm afraid even my friend won't be able to help me. Although I didn't find the hidden place of the dragon, at least I am able to find a better feng shui place for my grave. But then Jiangju feels something and when he looks back, he sees a bright light, and seeing it Jiangju says, Huh? Such great luck. After this the elder is speaking to the prince, the young master accepts virtuous and virtuous people. If this person is a helper, it will definitely become a great help to the young master. Do you want to send someone to bring that person back? And the prince says, forget it, it would be unpleasant to force such a person. And then Jiang Zhu boards the ship again, and seeing him come in front of the elder prince, he says to Jiang Zhu, young master, be careful. And Jiang Zhu says to both of them, hello, we will meet again. Sometime after this, Jiang Zhu is saying, this strong man, look at your face is not bad, how about I tell you your fortune? I can calculate anything you want to, don't you want to try? But that man is speaking, no no we don't dare to mess with you. And they run away from Jiang Zhu, and Jiang Zhu is saying, bah, a bunch of ignorant things. And then the elder says to Jiang Zhu, Mr. Jiang, if they see your divination, they would not avoid you like this. Then Jiang Zhu greets the elder and the elder says, Mr. Jiang has only been here for a few days, and you almost completely offended every person on this ship. And Jiang Zhu says laughingly, divination is like this, and I'm just telling the truth. And the elder says, oh, the most difficult thing to listen to in this world is the truthfulness of the words. If you are not good at calculating people, you might as well be polite. Then Jiang Zhu says, only talk about the mysterious area, and don't talk about the ordinary half-sentence. Don't persuade the Taoist priest. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, I really want to be like those charlatans who talk to people in such a cloudy way that I can't tell whether it's good or bad. But there is no way. I must tell the truth, or I will be punished. And the elder says, the young master wants to meet you. And Jiang Zhu says, oh, is he back from? Then I'll go and meet him now. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, half a month has passed since I survived that tribulation. And thanks to this young master, I'm safe and sound standing here. Although I wasn't able to find the hidden dragon place, I got some luck. It looks like I have no choice but to stay close with this prince, until I have the ability to pass this tribulation. Then Jiang Zhu goes to the prince and says to the prince, Is the prince's problem settled now? And the prince says to Jiang Zhu, Well, sir, have a seat. And Jiang Zhu says, These days, I'm collecting this young master. This person can be a moment of luck, naturally not ordinary people, he is the son of Emperor Qin's brother, the identity is the Prince of Qin, a person under the ten thousand people above. He has a reputation as a wise king, and likes to associate with people of ability, and has countless followers. Originally, he was an idle prince in his own peer, but the king of Qin's state had been ignoring the government for years, so he was asked by the Grand Minister to supervise the country and temporarily live in daily life. And his current visit to Yuhua River is also to calm the floods. These days, people often complain to me about his bad-mouthing when he tells fortune, also his pitiful eyes just now. Could it be? And the prince is saying to Jiang Zhu, since Mr. Jiang is unwilling, then forgets it. And Jiang Zhu says to the prince, the prince is generous. And the prince says, actually, I just summoned you now because I have something that I want to tell you. My business here is finished and I'm going back to Xianyang. So would you like to come with me or you want to leave? And Jiang Zhu says to the prince, If you don't mind, I'd like to make a living next to you. And Jiang Zhu is thinking, I still need your luck to avoid the tribulation. How can I leave you now? And the prince says, Of course not. That's the only good news these days. Then Jiang Zhu says, I've been wanting to ask you, since I entered, I've noticed that you have a stagnant air on your brow. Is something bothering you? And the prince stands up and then he says to Jiang Zhu, It is nothing but the hand of disaster relief. The money and food allocated by the court is far from what I expected. I know that the food is being transported and eaten by people and horses along the way, so there must be losses, but the money will never be lost. The imperial court allocated 100,000 silver to me, but I only got 30,000 to 40,000 tails. Where did the rest of the money go? 
This time when I return to Xianying, I want to ask the imperial court. And listening to the prince's words, Jiang Zhu is thinking, Qin State really has something wrong, and it seems to be more serious from what I imagined. The ruler was so feckless and unscrupulous, and the officials in the court were probably not so clean either, and the disaster relief alone shows how serious the corruption was. It is true that the upper beam is not correct, and the lower beam works. Speaking of which, the Yuhua River flooded this time because of me. If I do not do anything, the karma of the living creatures will have to manage my head a share. When the merit is damaged, it will be finished. I still hope to accumulate some merit and virtue to cross the tribulation. And Jiang Ju says to the prince, Prince, do you know the reason for this sudden flood? And the prince says, Sir, you know? So Jiang Ju says, the young master sits down, and I'll tell you the whole story slowly. In this Yuhua River lived an old turtle named Black Black General. And hearing this the prince says, this old demon is really evil. No wonder there are always innocent people missing along the river in all these years. So he was the one who was behind it. This kind of evil. How dare they try to seal the emperor to turn into a dragon? Hmm? And Jiang Ju is thinking, why did she avoid talking about the demon princess of Qin? Then the prince says, sir, how do you know these things? And Jiang Ju tells, the old turtle once carried me across the river and one happened to find these things by chance. And the prince says it turned out to be a coincidence. At the same time the prince is thinking, is it really such a coincidence? That old turtle is a thousand-year-old demon, how can he talk about his evil deeds with others? The first time I saw Jiang Ju, I fished him out of the Yuhua River. And Jiang Ju further says, wait, just said that the old turtle suddenly crossed the dragon robbery but he also said with certainty that the back of the crow will die undoubtedly. Seems that the old fish died under the sky robbery, and Mr. Jiang must be related. And the prince says, You are really a powerful person. And Jiang Ju says, What you are worried about is just money and food, so I will do this as a token to help you. And hearing this the prince says, How can I let you spend money? And Jiang Ju says laughingly, Ha ha, I have nothing. If you expect me to provide money and food, I am not able to do so. And the prince says, Mr. Jiang thinks. Then Jiang Ju whispers in the prince's ear, So many years, the old turtle has abducted a lot of people from the Wei and Qin state for the purpose of cultivating incense in the shrine, and raised them in the Tiananmen mountains. There is also pood, and it has been accumulated over the years, which is enough to meet the urgent needs of the young master. The old turtle served under the heavenly punishment, the cave in the water will have no master, the cave has accumulated a thousand years of treasures converted into silver money, to buy food from the gentry along the river, but also enough for the disaster relief. And as soon as the prince hears this, he becomes very happy and he says, This is a very good method, Mr. Jiang. This is a thousand years of merit, and Jiang Ju says smilingly, I don't know if I can get into the eyes of the young master if I use this to vote for the name certificate below. At the same time Jiang Ju is thinking, those grains and treasures are all that I have seen throughout the life of the black backed general when I calculated its destiny. I didn't expect it to be handy at this critical time. And the prince places his hand on Jiang Ju's shoulder, and says to him, I thank sir on behalf of the people of Qin. In this way, the people will be saved. Without further ado, let's go. After this the scene shifts and we see two shaman. And Tu Shanlin's servant is saying to her, Master, below is the Sun Moon Lake. Then Tu Shanlin says to the dragon, Come out, old dragon king. And we see a golden dragon, which transforms into human form. Then he is saying, Run, it turns out that the Lord of Heaven wants to meet me. The old dragon, Aushuan, has seen the Lord of Heaven, but I don't know what brings you here. And Tu Shanlin shows Jiang Ju's picture and asks the dragon, did you happen to see this person? And looking at Jiang Ju's picture, the dragon is thinking, Isn't this person Jiang Ju? Then the dragon said to Tu Shaman, This man's name is Jiang Ju, and he came to me to borrow some books for half a year, and we also had good conversation, so we were regarded as friends. By any chance is my friend offended by the Lord of Heaven? And Tu Shaman says, What if I am offended? So what if I am not offended? So the dragon says laughingly, Can the lord of heavenly demons give the old dragon a little pace? 
And two Shanon says, what if I don't give it? And the dragon says with a serious look, if the heavenly demon lord insists, that is also my little friend's fate. However, if the heavenly demon lord wants to deal with him, I'm afraid it will not be easy. And Tu Shanon becomes serious after listening to the dragon. Then she says, Are you threatening me? Then the dragon turns back, and says to Rina, It's not that I want to protect my little friend, it's that my little friend is extraordinary. If the heavenly demon lord wants to touch him, I'm afraid it will cause a lot of karma. He is the great power. When great power comes, the sky changes. And listening to the dragon's words, Tu Shanon is thinking, H.M., the words have a hidden edge. This old dragon over the years immersed in gossip and he studies. This talk has also become incomprehensible. And Tu Shanon tells the dragon, That's good. Only an extraordinary person is worthy to be my husband. And as soon as the dragon hears this, he becomes very confused. And this story ends here. If you want to see its next part, please subscribe to my channel. So that I can upload its second part soon. So see you in another video. Till then bye.